Hello, hello everyone. Dr. Mandel here with you. I'm here to share some great information with you today. I'm going to go over some very important things pertaining to pain, nerve pain, neuropathy. I'm going to cover uh, many things pertaining to nutrition, uh, common things that you can do at home to help your problems. Uh, there are many conditions that lead to nerve problems, as well as diabetic neuropathy, physical uh, conditions, injuries, falls, poor posture, poor sleeping habits, uh, looking at conditions related to uh, spending time looking down on the smartphone. So I come out just to have some fun with my, uh, my chatters out there, but uh, I think that you're really going to enjoy this program, and I want to send a lot of love to everyone. But uh, let me get right into uh, this topic tonight. We look at nerve pain. The first thing we have to understand is that there are many things that lead to nerve pain. It could be a pinched nerve. It could be a herniated disc. It could be chronic arthritis. It could be diabetic neuropathy. It could be poor posture. It could be even genetic weaknesses or problems. It can lead to uh, osteoporosis of weakening or collapsing of the vertebrae. It can lead to ligamentous instability. It can lead to poor posture when it comes to sitting incorrectly. Um, I'm going to go over a lot of stuff with you today because I'm just in a good mood because uh, the, the chat was so beautiful last time I was on here. I want to come out and really give a lot of love to you and see if I can help a lot of people out there. So <clears throat> I know a lot of you may have questions, but just bear with me because there's a lot I want to talk about. Uh, if you, if this doesn't apply to you, I'm sure this will apply to a, a girlfriend, a friend, a loved one, a family member, a grandmother, a grandfather, a cousin, because you're going to learn something really important today. You're going to learn a whole lot of good stuff because this is a little different than me coming on and doing a video and talking about one thing. Because what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about a lot of things, but it's going to be interesting. So let's first get right into the, the meat and potatoes. All right. The first thing I want to talk about nerve pain is you. What are you doing day to day? Are you spending time on your smartphone doing this all day long, spending all those hours? Are you sitting with no support behind your lower back. Uh, and let me explain why a support is important. It doesn't have to be a lumbar support. You can use a rolled up towel or, or, a, or a pillow. If you're spending a lot of time sitting down, all right, hear me out for a second. If you're spending a lot of time sitting down and you're sitting back in a chair, guess what happens? Your pelvic rocks backwards, okay? Let me bring this down a little bit so I can get a little better picture of me. So your pelvic rocks backwards. Your pelvic rocks backwards. What happens is the curve in your back goes the opposite way. So now we do this. Watch me. You see this little hunching? So what happens when our pelvic rocks backwards without a support behind our lower back, our, our pelvic, uh, our, our lower lumbar spine, the curve of the normal lumbar spine comes out like this. Now what happens is without a support supporting your lower back, your shoulders go forward. That's a big problem. That's why we develop a lot of conditions in our neck from us sitting incorrectly. Uh, they have lumbar supports in cars and bucket seats, but they're not as good as you think they are. So if you're spending a lot of time, the first and probably the best advice I can give you when it comes to sitting is put a little something behind your back. And you'll see that once you sit back against it, your shoulders come back and you're going to prevent a lot of neck problems from occurring. Now, the other thing we talked about this uh, the other night. When you're spending time on your smartphone, because most of you may be on your smartphone right now doing this. Try to get in the habit of jutting your chin down like this. If you jut your chin down, you have less pressure on, on the vertebrae, less pressure on the ligaments and muscles. We talked about that your head weighs 12 pounds. For every inch you go forward, it's an additional 10 pounds. So for every inch, it's 22 pounds. For two inches, 32 pounds. Three inches, 42 pounds. That stress accumulates, and that's how we get degeneration. The problem with degeneration, degeneration is like blood pressure. It's asymptomatic. Degeneration is like... Uh, diabetes. It's asymptomatic. So we don't want to have to wait till symptoms start to hit us later. When symptoms start to hit us later, it's too late. Then it's trying to preserve your problem from getting worse rather than trying to correct it. So the more that you can learn and understand about your body, the, 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 the longer you're going to go within your life feeling better. And the quality of life is all about health. We want to keep your health there. So we look at our posture if you're sleeping on your stomach, you need to be aware. If you sleep on your back, you want to up, keep a pillow underneath the knees uh, and the knees slightly bent. It takes pressure off the lower back here. If you're on your side, put a pillow between the knees. Bend the knees a little bit. That takes pressure off. When you bend the knees, it takes the psoas muscles, those hip flexors out. 
and it can really relax the spine. If you're sleeping on your on your stomach and you are a stomach sleeper, I do recommend to put a pillow under your stomach because when you're on your stomach, your back does this. It sways back. So if you put something under your, your stomach, watch what happens in my back. You can't really see it here. What happens is it comes back out. So you really get that curve out. You're able to be in a better posture. Uh, but when you're sleeping uh, on your side, I like to have your head exactly the position that you're in when you're standing or sitting. You see my head right here? Not here. So if you're sleeping with your pillows too high, that means your head goes too forward. And if you're sleeping with your pillow too low, your head goes backwards. So you want to make sure that when you're on your side, you want to make sure that your ears stay in line with your shoulders. Because many people out there, I get so many uh, texts and uh, uh, emails, uh, people ask me, what's the best pillow? There is no best pillow. The best pillow may be the cheapest pillow for you. I buy a pillow. Uh, my pillow, let me grab it here. Okay. Let's go pillow here. This pillow right here is about 20 something dollars. But this pillow, believe it or not, is, uh, let me see here. Let me pull this guy out for you. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, I'm only gonna pull this out for you guys because I wouldn't do it for myself. Um, this pillow is a bamboo. It's bamboo inside. And what I like about it, it has a zipper. And you can take it out if it's too thick. You could add more if it's too thin. Uh, but what's nice about it is that if you're a side sleeper, get something thick. Don't have those little thin pillows. Now, if you have a thin pillow, when you sleep on your side, use two pillows. Use two of them. If you're on your back or your stomach, you can use one pillow because you don't want your head flexed forward. But if you're spending six hours a, a day or a night in, in an awkward position with your head like this, you're, white, you're waking up a stiff with a pinched nerve, that can lead to a lot of problems. So just be aware of sleeping. So I wanted to talk about sleeping. I wanted to mention about sitting, using a support pillow. I want to talk about, I mentioned about using a phone, try to get into the habit of uh, jutting the chin down. Watch me here. Jutting the chin down rather than the head because the head weighs 12 pounds. And if you're putting that stress and that load on your neck, it's going to cause problems. So those three things are really important because if I just tell you how to treat your problem without getting to the root of what's causing it, uh, that's not fair to you because we're really missing the causation because we can't, we, we need to stop treating symptoms. We need to get to the root. Once you get to the cause, things are a lot easier to take care of. So the next thing, um, we, we look at the nerves. Uh, the nerve uh, has uh, it's very complex. The, the brain is up here and the spinal cord comes down the spine between the vertebrae and you have these nerves that exit out. You have 31 pairs of nerves and they come out of the spine, the neck. We have seven cervical vertebrae, eight cervical nerves. Uh, then we have 12 thoracic vertebrae and then five lumbar vertebrae, one sacrum on the bottom. But there's always nerves coming out of there and the nerves that come out of the neck affect the shoulder into the arm. So how many people out there, and I've got a lot of people here, um, have ever had tingling or numbness or cramping or aching uh, even into the arm? Or what about down the shoulder blade? If you're getting pain down the shoulder blade, most of the time it could be a nerve that's inflamed coming from the lower neck. If you're getting tingling or numbness, let me teach you something here. This is interesting. If you look at the first two fingers right here, and this, let's say these two fingers are bothering you, it's numb, this is your C6 nerve. The middle one is a C7 nerve, and these two fingers are C8 nerves. Okay, we have eight cervical nerves. So if you're having tingling in this area, I can tell you maybe the diagnose your condition, C6. Okay, you can really backtrace it and see where that nerve is coming from. So by comparing dermatones, which are certain levels in the body, we can communicate like a puzzle that if you're having something going on in a particular part of your body, we can then trace that back to where it's coming from. It gives us a better diagnosis. Now, the other thing is people are talking about, you know, cervical distraction a way of lifting up on the head, cervical traction. Uh, they have cervical traction units you can get on Amazon, uh, the over-the-door over the door cervical units that can lift the head up. Uh, there are different uh, situations you can use like cervical decompression. Your head goes in a, a little device and it pulls the head up. Traction is good. People talk about inversion. You know what inversion therapy is, right? A lot of people with low back problems will say, you know, is inversion therapy good? I have a lot of videos on that. By the way, if you have any questions about your condition, 
and I mean, I'm obviously not going to touch on everything tonight. Tr go in the search bar and type in back pain, type in inversion, type in uh, neuropathy, type in neck pain. But after you type in the search, type in motivational doc. So whatever condition you have, type in your problem, type in motivational doc. And I most likely have it on my channel. I have a lot of good videos to look at. So um, go into inversion. Let's talk about the nerve in the lower back. People have, uh, you know, uh, disc problems, bulging disc. And you may be a little overweight. And if you're a little overweight, obviously, you're going to have a weak core. And the first thing I tell people to do for lower back pain, okay, because I'm going to cover a whole lot here. The first thing I'm going to tell you to do is you've got to lose the extra weight around your belly fat inside. I'm not worried about fat around, this, around, the, around the cutaneous. This part around here, I'm not, I'm not concerned about that. What I'm concerned about, I'm concerned about the fat underneath the muscle around the organs. We call that visceral fat. And the reason why I talk about visceral fat is because visceral fat occurs by eating poorly. And that means usually eating too much processed sugars, processed foods, because insulin is the big answer here. When we have high insulin levels, we're eventually going to have, uh, uh, we're going to be resistance. We're going to have insulin resistance where the cells are not going to allow insulin to do its job. So when insulin is secreted from the pancreas as a result of a lot of sugar that we're eating or poor sugar, and I'll explain this in just a second, that means that the insulin goes to the cells, outside of the cells, and tells those cells to open up so the glucose that's in the bloodstream can get into the cells so we can get our energy and our energy supply. But what happens is those gates never open up after a while because there's too much insulin. So the body becomes resistant. So the way to fix that there's a few ways. Uh, alpha lipoic acid is great. It lowers blood sugar levels. Uh, there's a, quite a few things that I'll go over a little later, talk about the nerves. But if you're having a diabetic uh, neuropathy or any kind of neuropathy burning in the nerves, and I'm going to come back to the lower back in a second. But if you're having any neuropathy as a result of high sugar, because remember, sugar affects the nerves. Alpha lipoic acid is extremely, extremely helpful, and it can do miracles for you. Not only can it help heal the nerves and antioxidant, but it actually lowers your sugar levels, okay? Now, while we're on sugar, because sugar is a problem for a lot of us, particularly uh, millions of people worldwide, and even if you have normal sugar levels, it doesn't mean that you're not insulin dependent, or is, I'm sorry, insulin resistant instead of insulin sensitive. Insulin resistant means that's we're having too much sugar storing in the bloodstream and the sugar could only go two places. It's either going to get burned as fuel, three places. It's either going to get burned as fuel. Okay. It's where it gets into the cells. And that's why, I, that's why exercise is so good because if you have problems with your sugar uh, exercise, because by utilizing muscle, the muscle doesn't need insulin. A lot of the time, the muscle will allow glucose to come right into it without insulin being even available which keeps your pancreas from work overworking. So it's either going to burn, uh, use, be used for energy. It's either going to be stored in muscle or in the liver as glycogen, or it's going to be converted into fat. And what happens is when we have too much uh, sugar, it gets converted into fat. And that fat that I'm talking about is inside the gut that covers the organs that we call visceral fat. And people have visceral fat is, is linked to high blood pressure, linked to diabetes, uh, type 2 diabetes. Uh, it's linked to metabolic syndrome. It's linked to many different conditions as well as autoimmune and well immune problems. Uh, it affects so many different things. So if you look on a metabolic syndrome, there's a lot of conditions that come into it as a result of our poor diet. So I want to stress that. Now, why am I talking about the, 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 the gut, the visceral fat in here? Why? Because if you're carrying around that extra visceral fat, that's extra weight. So with that extra weight, means that you have a bigger belly. And that means when you stand up, your body wants to go forward. So the muscles have to work harder to hold you back up from, from falling on your face. It's kind of like a girl wearing high heels. Uh, the muscles have to work harder, not good. And so what happens, the, the ligaments, the discs start to really take a toll. And over time, we get more wear and tear. And eventually we start getting weakness of the outside fibers of the disc called the annular fibrosis. And that disc inside can start to seep through. We call it a bulging disc or a herniated disc. And that can start affecting the nerves. Okay, so I'm going to go into that in just a second. So getting back to your question, uh, we're talking about uh, the inversion table going upside down. Well, I just did a recent video. Go back to my channel about decompression. I did a couple of things in decompression that's helped a lot of people. Things you can do in your bed. The only thing I don't like about inversion is that 
your head has to go upside down. So if you have issues with your eyes, like glaucoma, or you have increased blood pressure problems to your brain, and you're upside down for long periods of time, it will make it worse. So I just want you to be aware of that. So now that's going to take us into our next thing. Uh, let me just uh, get myself situated here for you, because I don't want to really uh, mess up on you here. I want to try to give you as much information as I can. Now, we talk about uh, neuropathy. Neuropathy really, by definition, is pathology of the nerve. And neuropathy can happen anywhere. Neuropathy can happen from a nerve being pinched on. Uh, a nerve in the lower back can be compressed. We call it sciatica. That nerve can go into the buttocks. It can go down the leg. It can go all the way down to the foot. You get tingling, numbness, cramping, aching. Um, and when you're getting this, these types of symptoms, it's hard to walk. It's hard to function. It's hard to sleep. Uh, but again, anything with nerves, alpha lipoic acid is extremely good. Now we'll go over some different herbs and some vitamins that you're going to want to hear about uh, that's going to help your nerves because nerves can play funny games. Remember that nerves have a covering around them. It's called a myelin sheath. And that myelin is protects the nerves. And when you have diabetic neuropathy or you have high blood sugar, you have too much glucose flo floating around, that, that glucose, remember, is inflammatory. All right. Very important. So what does that mean? That means that inflammation affects the nerve, just like the blood vessels. So if you are having high sugar, guess what? It causes increased placking of the arteries. So even though I've done a lot of videos uh, with, you know, how to, how to unplack those arteries, there's a lot of things that we can do, but uh, we have to also eat the right foods. Uh, that's very important. You just can't do what I tell you to do without changing your lifestyle because it's not going to work that way. So basically, uh, diabetic neuropathy, we're looking at uh, tingling, numbness, cramping, loss of feeling, uh, problems that just kind of gnaw us away. Uh, vitamin B12 is extremely good. Uh, B12, uh, the only problem are uh, people who are vegetarians, you got to be aware because you may not be getting your B12 as much. But uh, uh, there are a, a lot of deficiencies you can get in B12, not only from vegetarians, but people who are taking metformin. Uh, stomach people who are taking a Prevacid, we talked about this Prevacid or Prilosec or over the or or or, or any types of uh, proton pump inhibitors because that will diminish your B12. Uh, your stomach acid reducing histamine, your H2 blockers, your tagamins, your Pepsid AC, uh, those will inhibit your B12. So a lot of deficiencies that we develop um, don't always come from just our diet. It comes from the side effects of the medications that we're taking. So you need to be aware. That, that a lot of these medications, particularly um, uh, people who, are, who have digestive issues, who get heartburn, who get uh, acid reflux or regurgitation, uh, if you're taking it over the counter, I'm saying if you're taking like a proton pump inhibitor, like a Prevacid or Prilosec or uh, Zantac, uh, this is stopping the, the, the acid from accumulating or actually from happening in the stomach. And I talked about this in our last conversation. The problem with that is you need acid to digest protein, you need acid for calcium to get into the bones. So people who are taking these acid blockers, um, you need to be aware uh, that there are a lot of different things we can do. And I, I have videos on that, and I'm going to spend more time in the future trying to help you on that. But you can get off of those. Uh, about 90 some percent of the people can need to get off because otherwise you're going to develop bone problems. You're going to develop electrolyte problems. It's going to affect your calcium absorption uh, because of the fact that you need acid to assimilate calcium into your body. And if you don't have the acid around, calcium's uh, not going to heal correctly. And you're going to have, you know, muscle cramps and spasming and all kinds of twitching, and all kinds of problems as a result of the, the lack of calcium. So uh, from that perspective, you know, I always tell people, you know, when in doubt, eat like a champion, you know, just make sure you're getting your vegetables, your fruits, your whole grains, uh, your lean meats, your, your, your fishes, your poultries, and exercise is always extremely important. So let me go over um, a few basic things of pinch nerves, just so I don't uh, over uh, miss something. The first thing you want to do, obviously, if you ever have a nerve condition in, a, in an acute phase, the best thing is always ice because you always want to reduce inflammation. Uh, chronic problems could use heat. Uh, heat is always something because it brings in more vasodilation, helps bring in more nutrition, helps relax muscles, takes away muscle spasm. And one of my favorite teas, by the way, for any type of nerve problem or even sleeping problem, because I understand that when you have uh, a nerve problem, you don't feel well, you or you hurt, or you're tingling, you're numb, this is hard to get to sleep. Chamomile tea. Chamomile tea is one of my favorite teas. It, it helps relax smooth muscle. Females who have PMS 
or actually who are ovulating or who have muscle uh, who have cramps in their female organs, uh, people who have muscle spasming in your body because the muscles are tight. It doesn't matter where. Uh, it helps smooth muscle. It helps uh, relax the smooth muscle of the gastrointestinal uh, system. It helps the stomach. It can help acid reflux. It can help constipation. Actually, I'm sorry. It can help colitis. It can help uh, 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 IBS. Uh, there's a lot of things it can help. So chamomile is one of my favorites. You also, also, a lot of times, remember that if you don't get sleep, you don't heal. Uh, sleep is so important. And the reason why we sleep is because our cells are dying. And the reason why we need sleep is so our cells can heal. And if our cells don't heal, we're working on uh, no gas. The other thing I recommend uh, for people who, who have a hard time relaxing, people under stress trying to get to sleep, valerian root. Uh, if you never heard it, it's, it's valerian root. Um, I'll go ahead and type it for you here just so you can see it right here. Uh, you can get that valerian root in teas. You can use the tea. That's right before you go to bed. They have them in capsules, and that's another great thing for you. Um, so when we talk about uh, pinch nerve, uh, and I'm going to move on here. We talked about using ice in the acute phase, uh, heat in the chronic phase. Uh, it's always good to elevate. If you have inflammation or pain, good to elevate. If you're having pain like in the legs when you go to sleep, uh, I talked about lumbar support pillows. You can use a moist heating pad for muscle spasm in the, in the, in the chronic phase. When you use a heating pad, a moist heating pad is, sends moisture into it. A regular heating pad just increases heat. But uh, when you use heat, don't sleep with it. Be very careful and because you can burn your skin. And also when you use ice, maybe no one's really made of, might have not told you this, take a paper towel and put it over the ice pack. If you don't have an ice pack, use a, a frozen thing of peas or a frozen dinner, or frozen vegetables. You can do it anything. It doesn't matter. But use this because when you put the ice pack directly on skin, what happens is you develop what they call hypoesthesia where, where it's like you, an anesthesia. You really don't feel anything after a while. It starts to get numb. And as it's getting numb, it's burning your skin. So you take it off and then you're in trouble. You just have like a second degree, sometimes a third degree burn. So um, I like the heating pads. I think it's good. But make sure it's in a chronic phase. And even if you're in a chronic phase and you have inflammation, uh, if there is swelling, remember, you could have had the condition last week, or last month, or a year ago. And if you see an area that's swollen, don't put heat on it. Put ice on it. You can never hurt yourself putting ice because you can get an acute manifestation of a chronic problem. It just re-aggravated. And again, that can cause more problems because if you use heat on an inflamed area, it usually will become more inflamed. Okay? But I do love the chamomile tea. Uh, the next thing is um, try not to dwell on the pain. Uh, it's a big problem. I know it's easier said than done. Try to keep your mind busy. Try to find things that you enjoy, hobbies. Try not to dwell on just the pain because it will eat you up. It becomes a vicious cycle. Your mom, your, your mind plays a, a really uh, tricky role on your body. You know, it's like, you know, we kind of like use subliminal hypnotism on our own body because we're in pain. And when we think that way, we continue to get more pain. It becomes a vicious cycle because just thinking about it increases our sympathetic nervous system. So we increase our sympathetic nervous system. What happens? We secrete more norepinephrine. We secrete more adrenaline. We secrete more cortisol. And it becomes a vicious cycle. So remember that when you go to bed, your cortisol levels are generally the lowest. And if you're under stress and they become elevated, it throws the whole circadian rhythm off of your sleep patterns. When you wake up, your cortisol level should be the highest. And so the reason why they're the highest because you're starting your day and you're using energy. But at night, your cortisol level is supposed to be low. So if we're going to increase our cortisol levels, uh, it's going to cause excessive problems and stress in our body. So uh, listen to something, type of music that you like. Take a break. Uh, if you're spending a lot of time on the Internet, you're looking at blue light, try to take a break. Uh, use the 20-20-20 principle. The 20-20-20 principle is that if you're spending 20 minutes looking at your computer or your smartphone or your iPad, Every 20 minutes, look, take, stop looking at it, take 20 seconds, okay, and look away 20 feet away. So in other words, every 20 minutes, you're going to take 20 seconds to look away at least 20 feet away from an object 20 feet away. That helps your eyes, it helps the brain, and then you can go back and do your thing again. That's a great little tip because that really works. Uh, watch some humor. Try not to watch those crazy 
uh, you know, uh, scary movies that can build you up and drive you crazy. I won't, really won't go much into that. Uh, make sure that if you are a smoker, you need to quit. If you're an alcoholic or like to drink a lot, you need to slow it down. A glass of wine here and there can be helpful as well because there are good antioxidants in there. Uh, so I have really have no, pro no problem with that. But um, I'm really big with the herbal treatments. Uh, as I talked about, the uh, I, I like wintergreen. I like St. John's wort. Uh, I like lavender. Uh, there's a lot of things you can use. But uh, let me go into a few things that I think are really important when it comes to pain. Um, I like capsaicin. Uh, if you can have anything spicy a little bit, uh, what happens is, is it desensitizes the nerves, the capsaicin. By taking capsaicin, chili pepper, uh, uh, cayenne pepper, or anything that's a little, any pepper, the capsaicin really can help take away nerve pain. It really blocks the nerve cycle. Uh, and particularly those who have like fibromyalgia, those who get migraines or even headaches, uh, are, it's really a great thing to have. Uh, the other thing, you know, I love turmeric. I've done a lot of videos on turmeric and turmeric will help relieve a lot of arthritis pain. It will actually help heartburn, believe it or not, help reduce inflammation. We're really unclear on how turmeric works against inflammation, but uh, it, it works. The properties are there uh, and it does a lot of things. Even those people who have indigestion, turmeric can be a wonderful thing for you as it can actually help your digestion. And the, the turmeric's sister or brother is Mr. Ginger. Uh, ginger is definitely one of my favorites. Um, I recommend everyone to have ginger. Great for your digestion, great for nausea, great for inflammation, great for cleansing. Uh, out of any herb up there, I think ginger is way up on the top. And I think it's a great thing to have. Uh, for some people that have chronic arthritis, there's a, an herb called devil's claw. Um, I'm not real active in it, but I know a lot of people have done really well with it. And there's another herb called feverfew. Okay, F-E-V-E-R-F-E-W. It's an herbal uh, thing they use for migraines, rheumatoid arthritis, for headaches, uh, even people who have uh, other chronic ailments. But I have not done that myself, but I'm just sharing it from other people's sources. So let's go back to a couple other things uh, for relaxation. Um, I like kava kava. I like St. John's wort. I like valerian root. Uh, for people who have fibromyalgia, ginseng is actually very, very effective. Uh, uh, let's see. But again, for the pain, I have to tell you that capsaicin is up on the list. There's a lot of research and studies on capsaicin, and it's something that you just don't want to ignore, particularly if you like it, uh, if you can handle that little spice in there. And I want to go back, if you just tuned in with me, if you're having any type of chronic nerve pain related to sugar or diabetes, uh, peripheral neuropathy, um, I will tell you that the number one on the list is alpha-lipoic acid. Okay, I will spell it out for you right here. It's A A L P H A L I P O I C A C I D, alpha lipoic acid for nerves and it actually lowers your blood sugar levels. Now, another thing you need to do to help lower blood sugar levels, you need to increase fiber. One of the greatest things that you can do. I know I'm throwing a lot at you, like a, like a, like a hand grenade, but I'm throwing a lot at you because you got me in a good mood, and I really want to bring this together, kind of piece it together. Fiber is the most important thing in the world. And what you need to watch out in fiber is that you need to watch out for the high glycemic index and the low glycemic index. Let me explain to you what that is in case you don't know what it means. The glycemic index means how fast sugars can absorb into the cells of your body. A high glycemic index is glucose and sugar. Okay, that's the highest. So that means if you eat plain glucose, plain sugar, that's going right into your cells. And what happens is we get a quick spike of, of insulin like this and a, quite, a, a big spike of sugar. And what happens is we get that spike, we get that real powerful energy, right? But what happens is about half hour later, we fall. Boom. That sound familiar, right? So you're eating a lot of sugar, you're eating foods with not a lot of fiber, and you get that boom. You feel like something just hits you over the head. Now, here's the key. The key is you need to do yourself a favor. And do me a favor because I want to help you. Take this advice. I want you to, When you're done here, I want you to go to Google, and I want you to put in Low glycemic index. You can put, put just type in glycemic index. Okay, yeah, I'll spell it for you. G L Y C E M I C I N D E X. There you go. Glycemic index. All right. Look what the, look what it says. It will list all the different kinds of foods for you. This is probably one of the most important things you'll learn in this program right now. Is that once you understand the foods that you're eating, it will tell you how fast they absorb into your body. It tells you the percentage. And the ones that absorb the, 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 the least are usually the most fibrous ones because 
the, the, the whole food to have fiber in it, fiber slows digestion down. It slows the absorption, it slows the release of the stomach, uh, the food in the stomach, it slows digestion down. And by slowing digestion down, that means the sugars never totally spike. That means the insulin doesn't spike. That means we lower insulin resistance. That means you feel full longer. That means you're more, you're more satiated. You have more satiety right now. You're not going to overeat. And you're helping your body digest your food. It's so important to try to really get fiber. Um, I love, you know, put some chia seeds, make the smoothies. And the best fiber that you can get, people, the best fiber you can get with the, with the lowest glycemic index of any of the fruits are your berries, your strawberry, your raspberry, your blueberry, your blackberries. Those are amazing. And whatever sugars they have, which is not a lot, you have so much fiber. So if you have, let's say you have 10 grams of, uh, of sugar, right? And you have six grams of fiber. Well, your net carbs will be 10 minus six. You're only taking in four grams. Ah, pretty cool, huh? So that's really important. Okay, so alpha lipoic acid. The other thing I want to explain that if you're having any type of nerve problems, one of the greatest things you can do is vitamin uh, B6, B12, uh, B1. But I will tell you, even like a good B complex, because instead of trying to chase it with all these B vitamins, I put so many people on B complex vitamins with their neuropathy, with their nerve pain. You will be amazed because the purpose of B vitamins is to work with the nervous system. The majority of all all the, the, the nerves that work in your body need those B vitamins. And the problem with B vitamins is that they're water soluble. So we're peeing them out. And if we're not getting the right foods and the right nutrients coming into our body, we're lacking those B vitamins. So when you have a deficiency or a problem, you may not know it, but you may start having more symptoms. So instead of running to a doctor when you're having pain, start applying these nutrients because these nutrients heal from the inside out. So B vitamins are extremely important. Uh, glutam glutamine uh, is another one. Uh, glutamine is the body's most abundant amino acid. It improves uh, side effects. Like if you're anyone out there who's been through chemotherapy or any inflammation, muscle pain, or neuropathy, uh, foods with glutamine that I think that most of you eat, and you're mostly going to get it, are your wheat, your barley, your peanuts, your egg whites, your milk. But uh, glutamine is a real big thing when it comes down to reducing neuropathy, particularly those people who have had chemotherapy or even diabetic neuropathy. You can Google that. Okay, so we're almost done here. We're almost done. So the important thing with neuropathy, uh, with nerve pain, with pinched nerves, with uh, herniated discs, with bulging discs, is trying to get to the root of the causation. Many of you can go to the orthopedist, your medical doctor, physical therapist, chiropractor. You need to get to the root. You really need to look at the things you're doing every single day. Look at your habits. Are you spending hours on your smartphone like this? Are you sleeping in an awkward position? Are you all crooked? What are the things you're doing every day? Are you lifting incorrectly? You know, are you lifting objects away from your body? Because whenever you lift, you want to bring your body close to it. You never want to twist your body when you lift. This is important information. This will save your back and save you from having problems your whole life. When you lift, you want to get as close to that object as possible. Go down from the knees, keep the knee, keep the back straight, and lift up, holding it close to your body. If you lift something and it's away from your body, remember, that 30-pound weight may now be 130 pounds. Because the further you go out, the heavier it goes and the more stress it puts on your back. Okay, I've known many people and many patients, hundreds, that have bent over the wrong way to pick up their toothbrush that ended up uh, getting treatment for months because of poor, poor biomechanics. So it's very, very important. The other thing I recommend for everyone who has any kind of back issue, who has a little bit of belly, start doing planks. Planks, uh, you're on, your, you're on your, your toes, you're on your, your forearms, and your back is straight. I don't have a picture. I can't show you on this, the way we're uh, live chatting here. And the other thing I can show you, okay, if you want to strengthen your back, you're going to start doing abdominal suckings, okay, like vacuum. Now watch what I do here. I'm going to come back already for you. Put your fingers on your belly button, okay, guys? Put your fingers on your belly button. What I want you to do is sit up straight. I want you to take your belly button and I want you to squeeze it into your spine. Come on, guys, do it with me. Squeeze it. Squeeze one, two, three, four, five. Let it go. Do it again. 
Squeeze it. Push it back. Push it as far as you can. One, two, three, four, five. Relax. Let's do three more. Push it in. One, two, three, four, five. Relax. Hurting, huh? Come on. Push it in. One, two, three, four, five. One more. Push it in. Bring the belly back, button back as far as you can. Pull it in. One, two, three, four, five. Guess what? You're working your core. You're working your transverse abdominus muscle. Start doing those exercises because I know a lot of you don't like getting on the ground, but you can do that sitting up. You can do that anywhere in the world. Start doing those little sucking vacuum pulls and your transverse abdominus muscle will get stronger. And guess what? Your back pain will start to get better. I'm telling you, your back pain will start to get better. This information I'm sharing with you is worth millions of dollars. Okay. I'm being sarcastic because I'm excited to share it with you. But when you start doing these kind of little things that no one's teaching out there, it's going to make all the difference. Because, listen, you have your family, you have your kids, you have your grandmother, you have your mother, your father, your cousins. You need to stay healthy. Every one of these people out there in this world wants you to be around as long as possible. But not only for you to be around, but for you to feel healthy and be around. Because... I understand what it's like to be on the other side. I've seen it. I still see it. I've taken care of thousands of people. I've been on many different talk shows. I've been on many areas throughout the country, actually throughout the world, and I know what goes on out there. People have a hard time. But the key thing is education. It's like anything else. You really need to understand more about the physiology of your body, how it works, things you could do to make it better, and have faith inside of you, of you. Because the power that made you and I is the same power that heals. It doesn't matter what you call it. We have healing magic in our body. I mean, our heart's pumping, our digestive system's working, our lungs are breathing in oxygen, our hormones are happening in the intrapituitary of the brain. Uh, you have sex hormones going on. You have the thyroid stimulating hormone. You have your kidneys. You have aldosterone. You have blood pressure. You have cortisol. You have adrenaline. You have norepinephrine. You know, I mean, I can really go off of this stuff. But the bottom line is you got all this crazy stuff going on. Why is it happening so perfect? Because you are perfect. And don't let anyone tell you anything different. Don't let any doctor tell you anything different. And you know what? If you got problems, it's okay. Medicine saves lives. I'm not here to knock medicine. But I am here to, to get you to be more proactive because you can't give up just because you're taking a drug because drugs are not going to correct the causation of your problem. They're going to treat you. Yes, people do need drugs and drugs do help. And God, thank God for medicine. OK, but in most conditions, your body could do amazing, magical things on its own. So I know I really said a lot and I can see the time, but this is a great video and I probably will repost this. Because I think a lot of people need to see this. This is kind of a lot more like a, like a more, oh, look at that. And it's more like an uplifting program. And sometimes we need that little bit of uplifting things in life. Sometimes we need to be around those kind of people that, that lift us up. Because all this, you know, pandemic stuff and all this negativity and all this stuff with presidents and politics and stuff that goes on, it pulls us down. We look at the news, it takes us down. There's so much negativity, there's so much negative out there. All we want to do is we just want to just give love, just be loving, just love your family, and, and, and just be happy. And, and most important, stay healthy. So I hope I was a some kind of inspiration for you because it's part of my job. That's why they gave me the motivational doc because it, it's just not education. It's, it's, it's this. You know, this is what we need. This is what brings the world together. Anyways, I know it's like a funny bone you hit on me, right? So I want to say blessings to everyone out there. I really appreciate you uh, being here with us. Uh, a lot of people in the chat room. It's just a, a beautiful thing. And uh, I'm going to ask every one of you out there, if you have, if you are not a subscriber, uh, subscribe. Why? Because I will do my best to help you and your family. Anyways, God bless you and um, keep up the great work. Stay safe out there. And uh, we will continue to put out more videos for you to help keep you healthy, uh, share the word. And again, please share my channel with others who can really use it. Um, just don't share it with anyone. Share it with those that you really mean, because I'm not here for numbers. Uh, I'm not here to, to, to make my channel grow. I'm here for one reason, to help you. And if we can help more people, and I need people like you to help me spread the word, because I can't do it all by myself. Anyways. 
Uh, we will see you again real soon in our next video, and I will continue to come out and do more live streams with you because uh, the, the, the impact is, is excellent. It makes me feel real good. And I'm going to actually bring some other professionals on with you, maybe, you know, optometrists and other doctors out here, uh, MDs, and to talk about some really important things. And hopefully uh, we can do that through streaming like this as well, which I'm actually working on. So most important, guys, uh, as I always say, make it a great day.